Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Cherki, founder and CEO of Content Square. Super happy to be here with Startup Vision. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you so much for being with us today. So, as you know, we always praise serial entrepreneurs and their success. And today I want to highlight the success story of a first time entrepreneur uh, who created a unicorn on his first try. This person is you, Jonathan. So you are the solo first time founder of Content Square. Everything investors say we shouldn't do. So what were you thinking? So I will make you a confession. Content Square, it's a company I should not develop. Uh, when, when I began uh, almost uh, nine years ago, uh, I should work more with the family business. My grandfather created an import-export dry vegetables company like beans or lentils 70 years ago. My father is working with them. My brother is working with them. So uh, I should work in this, uh, in this family business. And I was passionate about maths and statistics. I began in a student project at college at uh, ESSEC Business School that transformed in, uh, in a live project, only one company I have been working with. I, I was not actually thinking about, uh, about it. And in, uh, as you can have in a lot of startups, uh, the initial project you are working with is not exactly what you are developing. And same for Content Square, my initial idea was more to measure the efficiency of advertising campaign, of banners, And I quickly understand that even if the banners uh, is not really working well uh, or is working well, if the website is poor, people are leaving. So I try to figure out what happened between the banners and the checkout. And it's all the, the idea of Content Square was, uh, was beginning. I love the story. So Content Square is a leader in measuring digital performance. You analyze trillions of digital interactions of customer on the website. Can you explain your model? Yeah. So when I began, the focus was in acquisition, make more people come to the website. You had uh, 10 years ago, Google with a search. You had Salesforce with CRM, email. But now the cost of acquisition is, is very high. It costs a lot to make people come to the website. The traffic is on mobile, 60, 70%. And the conversion rate online remain low. 3% online conversion rate when it's about 30% in store. So the topic of improving the experience more and more strategic. To analyze the experience, you have technology like Google or Adobe Analytics that help you to understand step by step where you are losing people. But they don't really understand why does the user leave a website, what happened in the page, what happened before the click. So we don't replace them, we compete them by giving the picture about the behavior of the, the user, by understanding what uh, is the performance of your content, where do you have some issue, struggle, uh, what should be the good customer journey. And our approach is really to optimize the online experience by providing insight, recommendation about content, merchandising, pricing, loading time, performance monitoring, etc. Well, that's great. And, and Content Square became a unicorn with a global workforce of 850 people, which raised 810 million in funding and did a lot of acquisition. So what's next for the company now? So today we should be around 1,500 people. So the company keeps on growing. Oh my God. And uh, I would say um, this capital will help to achieve three main initiatives. Number one is more about uh, a global penetration, meaning hiring salespeople, marketing, customer success all around the world. We have offices today in uh, Paris, Munich, London, New York, San Francisco, Tel Aviv, Tokyo, Singapore, Barcelona. Uh, we are opening a lot of new territories all around the world um, because I always believe that um, when you are in an equipment market as we are, the difference between a good company and a blockbuster will be the fast execution of sales. 
So we are uh, growing our capacity everywhere. Second topic of, uh, of growth and investment is more around innovation. R&D, engineers helping to uh, uh, leverage all the power of this data to um, try to uh, understand better what you should optimize in the experience. So we are doubling down the size of the R&D team, plus investing a lot in AI, learning from all the changes of the website, learning from the behavior. We are also investing a lot in privacy. We think it's one of the pillars of the future digital society. We offer a cookie-less version of our product. We will also invest a lot in accessibility. One billion people have difficulties to access to online content. Blind people, old people, people with impairness. 70% of the content is not accessible. So we will try to make the web more accessible for all. So that is all part of our innovation approach. And number three is about m and merger and acquisition. The last two years and a half, we acquired something like six companies. We are super happy about uh, um, this, uh, this approach. The team well integrated in Content Square, developing a lot of uh, ROI, mainly adjacent technology to give additional value to existing customers, but also exploring new vertical. Our last acquisition was a company named Hotjar, uh, the equivalent of Content Square for an SMB where we have now 1 million customers worldwide in 180 countries, more SMB customers, so small and medium size. Uh, business. So we will keep on doing more M&A in the, in the near future. It has been a muscle for the company. I hope it will remain a, a strong muscle for the, the future. The last item that will have impact on everything we are doing is about impact. We try to go beyond revenue. It's not just the fundraising. It's not just the growth of the company. It's not just about the number of people. It's also about how we can impact more our current world. And at Content Square, we identify three initiatives. We quickly discuss about privacy. We try to lead the, the, the topic here. Same around accessibility. We created a foundation for uh, digital accessibility. And the last one is more about sustainability, where we think also we have a, a role to play. So impact is more and more important in the trajectory of uh, high growth companies. This is, yeah, it, it was my next question. I mean, you, you launched an incubator and accelerator, Atomic Light uh, by Content Square, and the foundation you talked about dedicated to digital accessibility. And one of your programs is addressing dyslexia, something really close to my heart. So I would like to talk a little bit more of you personally or the, the, the company, what the company is doing, uh, this way of giving back and, and sharing your knowledge in a, in a way. So give back is so important, and I will tell you why in my personal story, I will not be there without a lot of people. Without uh, the customers that uh, bet on us when we were much smaller, uh, without a lot of people that are just uh, introducing, supporting, giving feedback, without asking anything in exchange. And actually, Content Square was also in an incubator in ESSEC Venture, uh, the, the college where, we, uh, where I was. So we try to do the same. We try to share, we try to help, we try to develop a bigger ecosystem of fantastic startups. That's why so far we incubated 16 startups in our uh, Atomic Lab, in our incubator. And we really try to help them by uh, giving technology, giving uh, support, having people from Content Square leveraging them to not forget uh, where we come from and to give back. And there are a lot of other ways to give back. About the foundation and the dyslexia, uh, it's really an important topic because if we don't look at it, we, we were not uh, really understanding about how impactful could it be. When you look at the physical world, we had a lot of initiative of helping people uh, who could have any kind of handicap or any kind of difficulties to uh, live better. But the world of tomorrow, the world of today is more and more digital. So how we help them 
to figure out, to have a great experience anytime they are going digital. So that's really our approach with a different tool, with the Content Square Foundation by supporting a lot of initiative about that to make the world accessible for all. And it's not just about dyslexia, it's about a lot of different people. As I said, 1 billion people have difficulties to access to online content. For now, it's not a legal requirement, or at least for a lot of companies, it's becoming more and more a requirement worldwide. It will become, I think so. So the sooner you tackle it, the better it will be for uh, all, your, uh, all your people. Absolutely true. You're, you're absolutely right. So la last question on another tone, let's say. You know that we say that French people have trouble exporting themselves and being public figures. Well, you've proven the contrary. You embrace the American way of doing business, the culture, and also the way uh, you present yourself with great charisma due to your uh, very uh, open and sympathetic personality. C could you share your feelings about coming here for founders who would like to do the same move as you did? Well, first, I was able to do it because I have a fantastic American accent, as you can hear. Um, but more seriously, I think you come as you are. You come with a lot of energy. Um, the U.S. is a country where, uh, where there is a will, there is a way. So you have your chance. It's not easy. Uh, the first year, particularly when we arrived, my wife was pregnant to our, um, to our second child. Uh, we need to adapt. Our first child was not speaking English. So there is a period of uh, adaptation for uh, any new localization. Um, but I would say after a couple of months, you see that uh, people are trying to host you because they are in the same situation. Sometimes they don't have their family. If you take New York, you have a lot of immigrants coming from all around the world. Um, and the market is big. There is a huge opportunity. There is a lot of openness to make it happen. Uh, our approach was to go all in, meaning at the time we had a product, we came here, we overinvest. It was working and I hope it will keep on working. And, uh, and for the culture, yes, you need to understand the culture. For us, it was coming from hiring more and more people from America, but also to buy uh, some companies operating in the country that help to figure out the culture because it's not just about New York or San Francisco. In the US, you have uh, 50 states, all different, uh, and it could be the equivalent of 50 different countries, actually. So you need to really understand all the, all the, the culture, invest energy, meet people, Uh, but keeping your uh, willingness to go big, um, that's my way to think uh, about, uh, about our adaptation. Where there is a will, there is a way. I have a big believer of, of that. And I will recommend you to go beyond yourself by uh, staying yourself. Don't change. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for this energy and all the great things you, you said about, uh, you know, being here in America and building a great business and starting from scratch with a startup like a lot of people do. Thank you so much for sharing all those uh, thoughts with us on Startup Vision. Have a great day. Hope to see you soon. Take care, Startup Vision. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.